All right, so we're gonna do a YouTube problem to help you understand osmosis. So I'm gonna draw a nice little YouTube. And when I'm talking about YouTube, I'm talking about a glass tube that is U-shaped, not the online website where you can watch videos. Although you're probably watching this on YouTube. Okay, so there's a, a YouTube and I'm gonna call this side A and I'm gonna call this side B. And I'm gonna separate side A from side B with a selectively permeable membrane. That's a membrane which allows some things to pass and not others. So inside A, I'm gonna fill it to this level with a two molar sodium chloride solution. Now I need to explain molarity a little bit. So molarity is a measure of the concentration and we calculate it like this. We take the atomic mass of sodium. So, hey Google, what's the atomic mass of sodium? Sodium has atomic number of 11. All right, so I just got bamboozled by Google. I asked for the atomic mass and it gave me the atomic number. So, in fact, the atomic number of sodium is about 23. All right, so let's get the atomic mass of chlorine. Hey Google, What's the atomic mass number of chlorine? Chlorine has atomic number of 17. All right, once again, I got bamboozled. It gave me the atomic number. That's not what I want. I want the atomic mass, and the atomic mass of chlorine is about 35. So what I do is I take the atomic mass of sodium, the atomic mass of chlorine. I'm gonna add these two together and that equals 58. So to make up a one molar solution, I take, measure out 58 grams of sodium chloride using a balance, and I dissolve that in one liter of water, and that will give me a one molar sodium chloride solution. Now, of course, I've got a two molar sodium chloride solution, so I would simply take two times this. So I would take two times 58 grams of sodium chloride, and of course that equals about 116 grams. I would dissolve it in one liter, and that would give me a two molar sodium chloride solution. All right, let's get rid of that. Okay, very good. All right. And in this side, I'm gonna put a much more concentrated sodium chloride solution. I'm gonna fill it up with a five molar sodium chloride solution. Now those are actually incredibly concentrated solutions, but it doesn't matter, we're just worried about um, the difference in the concentration. Two molar, five molar. This one is far more concentrated than this one. So now let's think about the definition of osmosis. Osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules across a semi-permeable membrane from a solution of lower solute concentration into a solution of higher solute concentration. So water molecules will move from side A to side B. That will decrease the level of water in side A and increase the level of water in side B. Now the question is, when will water stop diffusing from A into B? Well, the answer to that is when it reaches an equilibrium. In other words, when the concentrations of solutes are the same on side A as they are in side B, then an equal number of water molecules diffuses into side B as those that diffuse from side B into side A. That's our equilibrium point. All right, so we can do some very simple math here. We've got a two molar solution there, a five molar solution there. So two plus five equals seven, all right? And we've got two halves. So we're gonna divide that by two and that's gonna equal 3.5 moles. So when we've got a 3.5 molar solution on this side and a 3.5 molar solution on this side, then that's equilibrium point and an equal number of water molecules move from A to B as B to A. So in order to make this into a 3.5 molar sodium chloride solution. Of course, water molecules need to leave this side and go into this side. 
and that will have the effect of diluting this and it will bring the five molar solution down to a 3.5 molar solution. So the water level in A will drop and the water level in B will rise. I'm just gonna ballpark where the position would be. And our final result would be to have a 3.5 molar solution on side A and a 3.5 molar solution on side B. And water molecules before equilibrium, ooh, look at that, I got a drippy pen. Before equilibrium, the water molecules would net diffusion from A to B, but at equilibrium, there's an equal number moving from A to B as there is B to A. Okay, so let's have another look, um, or a look at another YouTube problem then. So I'm gonna draw another YouTube. Look at that beautiful YouTube. Okay. I'm gonna label this side A, and I'm gonna label this side B. All right, so in this case, I'm gonna separate side A from side B with a selectively permeable membrane that allows sodium and chloride ions to move through it, as well as water molecules. So a similar problem as before, we've got a two molar sodium chloride solution on that side, and I'm gonna fill it to that level, and I'm gonna fill it exactly the same level on this side with a five molar sodium chloride solution. But the difference being here is the selectively permeable membrane, remember, allows water to move, but sodium and chloride ions as well. So I want you to think about what's gonna happen initially when I fill these, this tube. So initially, because water molecules are more abundant and they're much smaller, water is gonna move from side A into side B. There's gonna be a net movement from side A into side B. But sodium and chloride ions can also diffuse and they will diffuse from where they are more concentrated to where they are less concentrated, net movement. So sodium and chloride ions are gonna move in that direction. All right, so initially, you're gonna get a big movement of H2O in that direction and sodium and chloride ions are gonna move in that direction. So initially what would probably happen is the water level would increase on side B and decrease in side A. But as the water, sodium and chloride ions begin to equilibrate, then that will probably start to reverse and they'll come back down. So you've got an interesting dynamic going on. Water molecules and sodium and chloride um, ions are also diffusing. So initially there would probably be this situation, lower on side A and side B and then slowly it would probably return back to an equilibrium point where there is exactly the same water level on each side and we would have exactly the same molarity on each side. In this case, 3.5 molar sodium chloride solution there and a 3.5 molar sodium chloride solution there, but the water level would be exactly the same level. All right, good with that. Okay, I'm gonna do another YouTube problem and we're gonna add a little bit more detail. So let's draw a nice little YouTube. But I won't do it in a Scottish accent because even the Scots can't understand themselves. Okay, here's a nice little YouTube. And just like before, we'll have a side A and we'll have a side B. And we will have a selectively permeable membrane separating the two. And I'm gonna say that this selectively permeable membrane is permeable to water only and not the solutes. So in this side, I'm gonna put two solutes, okay? We're gonna add a two molar sodium chloride solution. And we're also gonna add a one molar glucose solution, okay? And then in this side, we'll start off exactly the same level. We're gonna add um, a five molar sodium chloride solution and a two molar glucose solution. All right, so we can add up the total concentration of solutes. On this side, it's gonna be 
total of seven molar and on this side it's going to be a total of three molar. Now remember the diffusion of one substance doesn't affect the diffusion of another substance. So, um, but in this case of course the solutes they're unable to pass through the selectively permeable membrane only water can. All right so initially what's going to happen then? All right, if you remember what osmosis is, osmosis is the diffusion of water molecules across a selectively permeable membrane from a solution of lower solute concentration into a solution of higher solute concentration. So water, of course, will initially move from side A to side B. All right, and remember it's a passive process, no energy is involved. All right, so the water level is gonna decrease in side A and the water level will increase in side B. Now let's do a little bit of very simple quick math to figure out at equilibrium what the solute concentrations will be on each side. So if we have on side A three molar solution and on side B we've got a seven molar solution we can add those up and that gives us ten molar um, total and because we've got two sides we're going to divide that by two and that's going to give us five moles. All right so we will end up with a five molar solution on side B at equilibrium and a five molar solution in side A at equilibrium. All right so that's kind of the simple answer to this but I'm going to add a, a little bit more detail. It would be nice to know exactly how much water side A lost and how much water side B gained. So let's have a look at how we calculate that. All right, so let me get rid of these. All right, that's that. And that's that. Okay, so we can work that out as follows. What we're gonna do is we're going to take the old molarity, how, where we started, which was 3, and then we're going to take our new molarity, which is what the molarity will be at equilibrium. All right, And if we divide one by the other, then that's going to equal 0 0.6. All right. Now, I'm just going to say for ease of mathematics that we had exactly one litre in this side but it really doesn't matter what the volume is because we would simply take the multiplication factor of 0.6 multiply it by the volume which in our case is one liter all right and that's going to give us 600 milliliters which is the same as 0.6 of a liter oh this pen's got a leak let me just deal with that all right okay Oh crikey, look at this. All right, so that means our final water volume in side A is going to be 600 milliliters. And that will give us, in other words, if water leaves side A, 400 mils leave side A, goes into side B, that will leave 600 mils in side A. And that will give us a molarity, oh, it's not stopped leaking. That will give us a molarity of five molar total on side A. All right, so similarly over here, we can get our old molarity, which is seven, and our new molarity will be five. And if we divide one by the other, then, um, hey Google, what is seven divided by five? The answer is 1.4. Thank you, got it right that time. All right, 1.4. So that's our multiplier. We can take 1.4, multiply it by one liter, which is what we started with. And of course that will give us 1.4 liters or 1,400 milliliters. The math works out, of course, because we originally had one liter on side B, 400 milliliters from side A moved to side B. So that would give us a volume of 1,400 milliliters. All right, so that tells us how much water would be lost in A and how much water um, would be gained in B. All right, there we go.